going to uh, do something different. Uh, I tried to look around and see if there was any other shops or anything doing it, but no. It looks like this is the first ever wild gable sides. What I mean by gables, I'll show you over here. See on the side there where the, the oven is, I need a finished side there. I'm not, I'm not going to mail it in and put a crap piece of uh, veneer there and it lifts off and gets destroyed over the years. And on this side, that's where the fridge is going to be. So I kind of have a perfect mirror, but the only drawback is the fridge should be 32 inches, right? Because that's how deep a fridge is. We're not using, we don't have the budget to get a $10,000 Sub-Zero or any of the other built-in. So we're bare boning it here. And this stove right here is about 24 inches, or the oven, built-in oven. That's about 24, so we this is that. And I want this to be a mirror, so that's my challenge. Uh, you'll, you'll see, we milled it all about a quarter inch. When I get it together, I'm going to plane it. And then the beautiful part about this is, there, I used the mahogany. There would be almost zero wood movement if, I, if I'd done this right. All right? Now, there shouldn't be any gaps. Uh, you might say, well, I've never seen this technique done. It's been done a lot back in the day. You know, it's just that we've forgotten how to do it. I never said. Now, with that said, I've, I've kind of, I've marked out where the cabinets go. I don't, I don't want, I don't need that pattern, all right, to really go in there. But I gotta be safe with the pattern. I don't want the pattern to look like it started there and butts into the cabinet. So I definitely I marked it out to try to be uh, safe here. And that's it. As they say, let the games begin. I'm gonna put my headphones on. I got this chop saw, my other chop saw over there. Uh, the other one over there, the, the switch got stuck. Too bad. It, um, I, I kind of kind of get busy and I get a little lazy not to order it or uh, take it take it down and get it fixed. So without further ado, I'm going to start here. I'm going to keep it plain on the first part when I start. And as I go in, I'll get a little more figured. Now I have not figured out what I'm going to do here. Okay. So the wood's going to decide. Like I get some Plain wood, I got some, and I snuck in a little bit of walnut. I don't want too much. I, I don't want this too loud. I didn't do like some I did in the past where I used, uh, I used to use a lot of maple to, to bring out the other part, but not in this case. I think putting the maple there is just going to look too loud, and I don't really want this to be a distraction. So, let me get into the zone. For the gable on the left of the stove and in the right that's exposed. This is going to be a little unique. I've never tried this before. I'm going to create a little detail, but I got to watch it. I can't be so busy there that it it's so loud that it takes over the doors and some extra look. So I think I've come up with a design. I picked these boards. You can see them. This is the hardwood. Right here is the outside part. It's like, it's become like a sable. This one has a little grain and has a little white at the end, right? This one is pretty, it's pretty much like this, but a different color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resaw them and create a pattern on those two panels. And the reason why I resaw it is by getting down to about a quarter inch, as long as I'm not too wide on it, maybe go three inches tops, that there will be no movement. The only drawback is the plywood I'm using is Columbia Forest Products. It, it's, it's good, it's soft, but it's not Baltic birch. At, at this sad time, you know, what's going on in Ukraine and everything else, you, you can't get it. I haven't tried like Finland, it's the only one I think producing. 
So with that said, uh, that's really just kind of sad about what's going on. More than, more than you know, me missing out on the, on the sheet of plywood. Yeah, the people there. All right, so let's do it. Let's don't chop off our hands. Start with five. And each hand, we'll still bleed here with five in each hand. Okay, five. So that's it. The, the big thing with re-sawing like this isn't the same, you might have saw it done with the bandsaw, is you do get straighter cuts and you can go faster. And re-sawing with a bandsaw, you need a lot of power. And I didn't really invest in that. I did have a bandsaw one time, but it wasn't powerful enough to do any re-sawing. So be careful when you buy it there. The only real thing I would say is a little uh, push block that I use. It, it, you know, I can't stress safety, uh, just keep your hands away, um, you know, and you won't have an issue if anything jumps. Now, I'm only going up halfway on the blade, like that piece I think is about three inches. I'm going about a little over an inch and a half. I didn't go one, one time, and I finally got a better cut. It was a lot smoother. And you can see, there I go, just one use the push stick at the end even though the blades not all the way up and you get much better pressure and that's really all there is to it then after that I put it through the planer I want them all the same thickness and I do have enough I end up a touch over a quarter inch when it's said and done and really it's it's just kind of like you're the grunt of the job uh, preparing the wood there's no, you know, put your music on, go back and forth, and away you go. Now, this was the first one I started. It was the fridge side. The fridge side is 32 where the where the oven goes only 25 so there's a bit of a difference so I had to go a little wider uh, my opinion frame it out first um, you know I go there with the square I make sure I'm good and once I get it framed out then I can kind of see how much room I have and what kind of design I'm gonna come up with I'm not, I don't really care if I have exact width-wise or length-wise, but I will do it within reason. And this one, I just did, you know, simple 45s down the center. That's really it on, on that. All those angles are all 45 degrees and, and also straights. So I, I didn't really uh, change it around. I mean, you could get creative and, you know, get a coping saw and start doing patterns. I wasn't really into that. I thought the patterns would add too much. I was just more into the shapes and the different grains going with the wood, like the picture at the beginning, which would highlight, you know, how gorgeous mahogany can be. And, you know, like I said, I've never done this. Um, I've done a few units like this, but not like that one. So I, w I was like holding my breath, crossing my fingers, thinking, okay, I'm don't go over the top and then here I am I'm doing all these angles adding all these different woods so um, I'm thinking to myself okay see it through find out find out if you've gone too far that's the thing when you're doing something new or you know you don't know how things are gonna look when they're all together Back the next day, and um, I'm laughing now because I said I was going to keep it low key. I kind of got inspired. Um, with that said, uh, when I stain this, the, this this should disappear a bit. I'm not here to give the shock, 
you know, you see with the cutting boards, light, dark, light, dark, or whatever. The, these are almost the same tones. It doesn't look like an album. When I stain it, they will be. Um, I'm happy with it. I, I tried to look around to see if any other kitchen place were doing anything funky like this, but no, I, I couldn't get any ideas or, or just see what other people were doing. So we're on uh, new territory, as they say. So I got my music going and uh, got the headphones all ready, pin nailer filled, ready to suck it up because he figured out this is a lot of cuts, eh? Um, like I said, I glue all the way around so it sort of becomes one and I'm going to, I'm fortunate enough I have a CNC so I can play this a healthy maybe eighth of an inch. I'll be down to a touch under a quarter inch and that's what I want. And it'll be just like parquet flooring, it, you know, goes all different directions and it really doesn't open up. And the same with this, this will not open up. So I've come up with a little design here. I'm just going to go like this, right? Spin, spin around. All right, a touch smaller. Now I'm going to make it sense. I'm going to make this square. And then, you know, I'm going to do a little, uh, I haven't figured out yet. Uh, do I keep the same grain running here? Or do I change it and go another way? So, this is the thing, what I love about doing this is I really don't have a plan. You can't sit down and start doing this and drawing it out. You'd be there, you'd be a fucking mental case. Plus it'd be so expensive to copy it, you know, trying to do all these pieces exactly the same. So that's what I love about this. It's kind of like, I guess, like, you know, like a, music, a musician in a way, you're, you're just playing and you're just, whatever's in front of you or whatever you feel like that night. So let's see what can happen. Let's do some magic as they say. So the bottom part, it'll tie in with the backsplash, that little piece that I'm doing there. So I wanted it to mimic what I did on the outside edge, but look completely different. So, um, putting different layers that are going in so I can only go so far I think that one was about a little over an inch and you can see right there I have a stop that's critical and you might not notice it on there because I got it on fast forward I waited till the saw blade stop don't go up with the blade there because this blade is spinning around it creates a fan and it's going to lift that wood and it's going to get jammed in there I had it once happen before in birch and it bent the arbor on my saw. So make sure it's down and it's just better safety. And you'll be surprised how fast it goes with the cuts. So don't be impatient. The, more, the thing is you want nice, clean, exact cuts. You know, uh, that's the most critical thing. So uh, the rest of it, it, it goes pretty good. I mean, I can't, I can, I'm not gonna lie here. It's, it, it's, that's so that there's one day this is another day coming up, so, you know, you're, you're looking at about three days to do both of them. Um, that doesn't include any of the finishing or anything, so. Um, I was kind of given the green light, so, it's, uh, you know, um, I mean, they, they were ecstatic because the house is also a bit of a spec house, so we wanted to look the part and maintain the value of the house, so we had to do a really, you know, nice kitchen and also very unique and wiping it down now with the glue like after is a must and you can add a little sawdust and now you're seeing now i got the big guy done the fridge side now i'm just doing the panel side on side stove and i just copied what was there so let's hence i got a left and a right and keep keep them together because if you don't Guaranteed, you're going to make a mistake. You think you won't, but it's you, you realize, like you know, you put a piece upside down or whatever. You want it them to be unique, but looking the same. So um, that's it. And I'm using the other saw. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to walk as far. Uh, Dewalt. Uh, I like the Bosch a little better for multiple cuts. Its arm is not as stiff. 
as the uh, DeWalt, I've noticed DeWalt there keep going up and down and after a while it, it feels heavier on the arm. I guess, you know, that motor, because the motor starts up, gives it a little kick. Not so much on the Bosch, the Bosch has a softer one. So I, I did notice that, that helps anybody. And there we are, all done. So that's it. So I got my left and my right. I did the top in a way because in the house I want indirect lighting. So I want a light balance so I can cut that top if I have to. So I'm very excited about that. It's gonna look a little different than you know looking natural like that. I'm using my veneer adhesive, uh, express veneer adhesive. It, it's a killer glue for veneer. Um, I guess I can attest to it. I've used it for over two years, but stuff's amazing. And what I'm doing now, it doesn't matter how careful you are, you know, like you go there, you feel like you got hairline gaps. So what I'm doing, is I'm just going to fill here because I'm going to run this through my, I have a CNC and I have a cutter there and I'm going to plane this, you know. I know that somebody else out there, the home workshop or whatever, probably won't have a CNC. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You, you can take a belt sander, just go one way all the way through and then finish it up with the orbital. Or if you have the good orbital, the Bosch one, like the heavier ones, big six inch ones, they'll, they'll cut through this pretty fast. But you know, this is what counts right now, all this, because I want this to look like one piece. Also, I'm gonna make it a little thinner, and there should be almost, guess what, zero wood movement, yeah? You know, this will just be like a veneer piece, and you know, there won't be any seasonal movement or anything like that. So, I'm just going here, I'm just putting it here on my finger, right? This will dry, like a medium brown and it's stainable so but I would I don't want to put like wood wood don't put wood putty in because you know you, you can have a little bit of movement and the wood putty could pop out if you have a little bit so stay away use you know glue uh, little pieces of wood little shims whatever you're not you're not gonna make um, uh, this thing perfect first time out and then that's okay and then what's great about it is just starting out or whatever <clears throat> you cut this many cuts you'll get deadly with your your saw so you can always just try a door like this you know this would be you know like uh, an entry door so the possibilities are endless so what you can do here you don't have to do a gable side like what i did now I'm just kind of looking at the gap here, trying to move fast because, you know, I don't want it to dry up. And I'll go about here and I'll... Now I was very fortunate I had the CNC, so um, if you're doing it yourself, just make sure you get nice and flat and try not to have too many ridges so you don't spend too much time sanding. Like I said, if you're doing... I belt sand it first, but with me, it was pretty easy you know I'm just letting the CNC run the only thing is I did hit the little brass heads and at the end when I did the other ones they it was pretty dull so I so I had to kiss that bit goodbye it was useless after four panels so keep that in mind when you you belt sand it's gonna if you hit the heads it's it's gonna wear wear down the sandpaper that's why it's better I think better to sand and not go as deep because then you don't hit the heads. Now I'm just taking orbital after and just going up and down. The big thing with sanding, people you don't realize, is it's kind of like go up and down, left and right, up and down, left and right. And you see there, I'm, I'm concentrating on a couple of areas. It's very difficult to sand properly and get things flat because the sander 
it tends to like if you someone might push a little harder in one spot another person should put another one and you create a little valley so that's why it's important to go up and down left and right upside down you know and I'm upside down what I mean by that is turning the other way like you should sand the other way of the disc and especially when you polish because when you go in one circle you 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 won't get a certain mark out in, in like the left corner right and at the top left right now after the sanding is done like uh, time for the stain and it's the same mixture we used at the last one. I made about two gallons of that stain, more than enough for that kitchen. Your biggest fear is make sure you put that bucket in a spot that I'm not gonna knock over. And, you know, I don't like I don't know if I can duplicate exactly that stain. Um, I'm just wiping it right in. I want that in the pores. There's because there's oil in that stain too, eh? So at the same token, if I get an opportunity to fill the pores, I'll do that. And I'm just wiping it dry now after letting it soak in. I don't let it soak in that long. You gotta work kind of faster. And of course I added oil. We're on a new project of the same project of the same project. <laughs> that Hell House still making a kitchen. We're stuck in the winter. It looks like we're getting um, a lot of timing on the kitchen, which is really good. I'm very happy. Now, what I decided to do was put the backsplash, like the side, the side panels. I was a little reluctant. I thought it would be like a little over the top, a little gaudy, whatever you, you want to call it. But I'm very happy with the first result. And I think I can do this, create that detail, and make it disappear. What's great, this, this is the perfect kitchen to do it on. It it's just will be a bottom part, top part's all wood. So it's not, I don't have to deal with the rest of the room. I don't have like some weird ass angles or kitchen over here. Straight galley kitchen large, so I'm very excited. So my process here is, you can see here I've framed up two. These are gonna be left and right. If you see the piece there, that's where the fan's gonna be in the center. Right there, where the plywood is, right there, yeah, that's it. Turn to the right, stop, the right, and that's the fan, all right, right in the middle. And yeah, they're right there. So I'm gonna wait till the end, till I have these panels done to see how it is. So my first thing, when you, I guess when you make it, you gotta have certain rules, is I gotta make a frame. I want this framed in. So I have everything nice and square, you know, to make sure when you put it in, it's nice and square, right? All right, I got that. I went a little higher here and you say, well, how come? I got an undermount molding that's gonna go there. It's actually gonna block out a lot of that. So I, I want to create the same look and disappear. So what am I gonna do, you know? like? You can't draw this out unless, you know, you're, you're insanely good and you got these pieces and you were to start cut each piece individually and do it like a puzzle or whatever. Um, but Mike, and then even if I have a CNC and I want to cut this and do some freaking elaborate puzzle, I have to use all different pieces. It would be a real nightmare doing all this. So what I like doing, just go with the flow. I'm looking over there. I don't want to copy that exactly. I don't want to be like a one trick pony. So I saw something one time and I really liked it. And they did like a little backsplash up here and they used decorative tile and it looked good. So I'm going to incorporate some of that, but I'm going to make my tile out of wood. And I'm going to show this. Then we're going to disappear for a while. And I'll show you what I mean. So I want, you know, this isn't, a, I'm not going to lie here. This isn't ex exact science here. So if I have 13 and I went 6, that'd be way too much. So I'm looking at about, I'm thinking at about three, eight, 2 inches, 3 inches. So 
So I'm just setting my stop here. And I got a touch over three. I'm going to go exactly three. The only part that's going to be hard, I'll show you in two seconds. Now, kind of like, wait till it stops here. I know it's a bit of a pain to ask to wait. And I'm going to go like this. If this makes sense. All right, I got the grain going up. Oops, I'm letting that go a little too hard. Any comments about letting it go too hard? I hear you, I hear you. And then the other thing I'll say about wood, like if, I, if I take these pieces, so I'm gonna go like this, you know? And like, like always, eh? Hey, if you're doing something like this, have the saw really close. So now, I got this, right? Now I got an idea. I know, I'm gonna put my earphones on. Now I got two ways, I got two woods here. I have to decide which one. Now I'm gonna go here and follow this with the inlay. Right? Now if I start here. And then I'm going to go here, same length, and I'm just going to go like this. All right? Now, <laughs> look at it. I'm, I'm making it look like more detailed than it really is, okay? And I'm laughing because people are going to think, oh, man, you came up and you went like this, you went like that. I'm, I'm keeping it simple. So this framing should be good. I should have a top and bottom. And then that's it. We'll pop by... I don't know, in a couple of hours, we'll see how I am at the end of the day. My camera person's here today, and so we're getting some great camera work. We're getting the final coat on the doors here, and then we'll see how that is. And, you know, stop me if I make this too gaudy, but I don't think so. It's the first time I've ever done this. I've ever had the opportunity, you know. I, I'll say this, being in business, and I could do this, and there are other customers that I could. A lot of them couldn't afford to do this, so they want me to do this for free as part of the, uh, their, their project. So if you find a cabinet place and you're, you're, you're trying, you know, you're looking here, getting some ideas, or doing it yourself, give yourself a lot of time, you know, because you, you can only do it, if you do this right, you won't be doing this again. It's not like anybody's going to yank out this kitchen and say, yeah, I want a paint of white or, or something. It's like it's like going into, you know, one of these castles and say, yeah, let's go yank, yank out the kitchen. And I stress that. And it becomes, the wood becomes, how can I say this? We're helping the environment. Right now, we're buying all this friggin' garbage. It's falling apart. It's killing kids. It's falling on their heads or whatever. And let's, let's stop that. Let's build it once, build it right. Who cares if it costs you three times the amount of money? You have it in your home forever. Do it, you know, unique style. And that's my little rant for the day. Now, that's the only thing I get there. If we say, well, I'm going to use less green or whatever. You realize how much cardboard it takes to wrap up each cabinet? You know, and, and you go through four, five, three of these kitchens in your lifetime? That's a lot. It's, you know, you, you don't kid yourself, plus the transportation, everything else. Right here, I'll deliver this locally. I'll throw this in the van. There won't be cardboard. There won't be anything else. So support your local cabinet maker. Thank you. Now, the, the thing is, um, did, I did the left and the right of the stove. Now, this is the centerpiece, right where the uh, cooktop is and where the fan is. So... Coming up with the design was a little tricky, so I took a little from each panel and put it in there in a smaller version. And I just kind of had fun with the center. I just did a couple of X's and just kind of outlined the wood there and just went in a circle. And eventually it was smaller and smaller. Uh, you know, you could see, well, you can't see, but the saw is right in behind.
So I stayed very close with this because they were, a lot of those cuts were slightly different. I, I couldn't just make like the, the other one you saw, I made a jig and just went straight along. This one, one would be a sixteenth of an inch. The other one would be an eighth of an inch. So they all had to be individually cut. Interesting or whatever the back was. No, um, I don't think this is the biggest fear was being too loud and too busy and you know creating that balance of detail but not in your face. So I'm very very happy with this. This is the length of the kitchen. These are the cabinets on the left. On the right, the center is a fan and also the cooktop right here. So, um, yeah, uh, there's nothing else I could say. I'm debating whether or not to put it together as one piece, like I did with the island, and then just put a little brace till I deliver underneath it, and then drop it in. I, I gotta make sure I'm straight, but what, if we're doing concrete countertop, what we'll do is we'll make a little lip in there so this goes in, but also I can move it up and down a bit. Um, I'm seriously considering it because when you go on site, how are you going to get this? And then if you put a little trim there to hide it, it's kind of sad though. It, it, it would look great as one piece. So I'm going to make a decision on that after I plane it. I'm planning it on the CNC. Like, you know, that's one advantage I have with the shop. Uh, if you're doing this on your own, take a belt sander, and but only go one direction. All right? Go all the way and then finish it off with the orbital. Try about a 60. Nah, maybe an 80. This is, this is mahogany. It's not, it's, you know, we've got walnut. Maybe go a little, a little deeper. Keep the clean and you'll be fine to get a flush. You know, you might hit the little pins here. I, mean, I know I hit them. But by the time you stain them and I put a little tint, they're so tiny. You can't even see them. So don't even worry about them. They're not like brads if you did. And the, the only reason I put them in is to, to hold that piece down until the glue hardens. You know, keeping it pushed down, <clears throat> sometimes a little piece gets a little wet or it just could turn a little for whatever reason. And then, you know, these things aren't down. The other thing is there will almost be no wood movement with this. I repeat, zero wood movement. Well, same thing as the other time with sanding, you know, up and down, left and right, and you know, you can see here, I my seam is a little higher, so you tend to work there, but same token, you don't want to create a valley. You'd be surprised how easy it is to do. The thing is with the valley, when you create it, when you spend too much in one time, you really notice that when you do a high gloss or any type of finish, so be careful. Now here, uh, same thing, I've taken the stain, wiping it in i'm trying to fill the pores and any little crevices as much as i can i'm not relying on grain filler only because i didn't want anything with with the color that would really destroy the mahogany there was one filler that was uv coated but i could only buy it by the court and you can see i've had a lot of stuff i don't know how long the court would last me and i couldn't get like a decent you know like a gallon or five gallon pail I w i'd be willing to try it you know because it looked decent uh, you you could also act as a sealer so it could save me a lot of work on building up the coats at the beginning so maybe next time it gets available in canada i hope now there's the first spray of the clear coat you could see it's a little lighter than the actual picture at the end and because there's a little bit of a tint in it, in the clear coat that I did, I just buried a little. And here we go. Now that's almost the final coat. And there we are. We have it. This is the unit with all the pieces. And if you could see the top part right there, that's untinted. That's the undermount molding. I didn't coat it yet because I'm waiting for more pieces. And that's it in a nutshell. Uh, 
I hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe. We need all support we can get. And we'll continue. We'll show the process of installing this kitchen. And we're also going to be building the room, which is super cool. And we totally believe in lighting. We believe that lighting is so underused, especially with the fantastic lighting. So there's all kinds of exciting things that are going to come on up behind the scenes. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And thank you for watching.